Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome back to another reaction to FNAF Game Theory. We're coming up already on our third episode of Game Theory's videos on Security Breach, and this one seems to be talking about Cassidy, Princess Quest, and also Glamrock Bonnie. Now, I've heard this is a good episode, the best one out of the trilogy so far, and I think Matt has a fourth one on the way, so I'm excited to jump into this one. Because I wasn't the biggest fan of the last two, but this one, you know, I've been waiting to hear Matt's take on Glamrock Bonnie, because that's personally my favorite mystery. Even though I think we all know it's pretty self-explanatory, pretty simple to piece together, so I'm curious what his stance is on it. And then also Golden Freddy and Princess Quest, because I know the file for the princess in in the game is called Cassidy, which, you know, is one of the spirits in Golden Freddy. So I'm very intrigued about that theory, but of course there is only one way to find out what Matt's thoughts are, and that is to watch the video. Also, some people thought I was moving in the last video. No, I'm just reorganizing all my stuff in the office, so apologies for the echo. There's nothing for the sound to bounce off of. I knew there would be a bit of echo, but I didn't think it would be this bad, so I'm very sorry. I'm trying my hardest. There's a lot of stuff in here. I have too much FNAF merchandise. But anyways, that's that's enough rambling, let's hop into Game Theory FNAF Is Golden Freddy Really in Security Breach? Hit the like button, subscribe, let's hop into it. Alright, so this is Is Golden Freddy Really in Security Breach? Hit the like button, subscribe so you don't miss future reactions to Game Theory. And here we go, take it away, Matthew. Thanks for coming in, Freddy. I, I heard you got some new eyes recently. Just want to check to make sure that they're all functioning before we send you back Roxy's out there on eyes? stage. Tell me, what do you see here? That is my friend Bonnie. I... Is him. <laughs> Don't we all? Don't we, do. we all? How about this one? It's me? Hmm, interesting response with heavy lore implications. <laughs> Gonna make a note of that one. All right. This is this exactly how Matt oh, would that's, take uh, notes. That's the DJ, you know. DJ Music DJ. Man. Mm hmm. But, uh, hold on, don't help me. I have this. DJ. DJ. Come on, Freddy. It's obviously Music Man. There it is. Music Man. Oh, Music Man. I remember seeing this on GT Live. It's a bop. Oh, we're still going. Cool Hello, opening. Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, where the only thing that slaps harder than our remixes is you slapping that subscribe button. Do it to my huge channel too. Thank you to do fix from the Game Theory subreddit for helping that meme achieve its true final form, and for letting me use it as a part of this video. As I write this, his masterpiece only has 400 views, Jeez, so let's blow that channel up. Link is in the top line of the description. It is you know a what to say. Fill up those comments. Let me hear you, music man. As the man said in the song let's go, let's go, go, go. say what you will about security breach and uh there's certainly a lot you can say about security breach the fact that it launched this weird unseen animatronic from pizzeria simulator into meme lord status is perhaps its greatest DJ music man and speaking of other unseen animatronics today's episode is actually a pair of mini theories all about two animatronics that are notably absent from this newest game mm -hmm. characters that have been with us since the very beginning of the franchise but whose 80s short Shoulder pads apparently weren't big enough for the final cut. And in a game that throws so much Freddy spaghetti against a lore wall to see what sticks, what gets excluded from the game is almost as interesting as what made the final cut. So what are the mysteries <laughs> Unironically very these true. two animatronics? Can we solve the mystery? Especially and with the all the strapped tell content. Us about the lore of this new game? That, my loyal theorists, is what we aim to answer today. Missing animatronic number one. Hopping right into it. Bonnie. We all thought it was strange when the trailers first dropped and we saw our favorite animatronic Animatronics in their new 80s get up. Freddy, Chica, Foxy, kind of. And Bot. <laughs> no, no, no. That that's an alligator. Yep, Montgomery Gator was in, and hey, Bonnie little guy. Bunny was out. At first, I Bonnie thought this no. was just gonna be a repeat of sister location. Introduce mm -hmm. some new characters, reintroduce some old ones with new looks, and you know, just leave a couple out. But then right Chica. outside of the daycare of security breach, we hear this. There is no rabbit at the Mega Pizza Plex. Yeah. Not anymore. And that right there, my friends, is theory. Bait. Stick it on a fish hook and drop it in the water to reel me 
Damien. Clearly, this was more than just an arbitrary swapping of characters. There's a story here, a mystery to solve. Glamrock Bonnie did exist at some point here in the hey, Plex, my man. doesn't. And the game continues to remind us of this mystery Where's as we bunny explore at? them all. <laughs> while trying to decommission Chica, you have to venture into Bonnie Bowl. And while we're up there, Freddy says this. I do not come up here anymore. I miss him. We even get a collectible Freddy. message from Roxy Raceway that talks about him. Quote, management report. The bowling alley needs a re-theme. While most of the Bonnie art was removed, kids keep asking, where's Bonnie? Do we have an officially approved response? So, yeah. Where is Bonnie? The kids want to know, and heck, I want to know. What I happened know too. to everyone's favorite I love Bonnie. rabbit? Well, to answer that, we actually have to follow the other messages that we get in the Faz Watch. Specifically, this security alert. Oh, yeah, his location. Monty Gate in the game's Going opening into service Gator tunnel. Golf. Quote, security report, 12.24 a.m. Bonnie is seen leaving his green room in Rockstar Row, heading east towards the atrium. 2.40 a.m., Bonnie enters the East Arcade. 4.12 a.m., Bonnie enters Monty Golf. Bonnie mm. is wandering around the Pizza Plex and winds up in Monty Gator Golf. And see, this is an important Woo, detail Gator because, golf. as we see in both <laughs> the game and the collectible messages, Monty has a bit of a mean streak going on. He likes breaking things. He also has mm. a bit of an ego. I don't know if you noticed, but the animatronics in this game are unusually human compared to the ones that we've seen previously. <laughs> they have personality, emotions. We see Roxy crying in her room because Poor we managed Roxanne. to escape her. We should have found it by now. It's not fair. I'm not. A loser. I feel Chica is just hungry all the time, and Monty wants to be the star. He's yes. looking for a way to rise to the role of leader of the band, singer in the spotlight. We know this thanks to hole number nine yes. of the Gator Golf minigame. Monty is center stage, and Freddy is left out in the dumpster. So when bass player Bonnie comes rolling into his domain late at night, Monty sees this as his opportunity to take him out and become the bass player himself. This yep. is all fairly straightforward just from reading those collectible messages, but it True. does leave me wondering why. Why did Bonnie go to Monty Golf in the first place? Well, what if someone led Bonnie there so he would get destroyed? Monty would get what he wants, a more prominent role in the band, and Bonnie would be quietly decommissioned and turned to Scrap. Scrap then that could then be used to help rebuild trap. another yes. rabbit that we're all familiar with. One that's hiding out in the basement. Good old Burn Trap Afton. Yeah. You want to know where Glamrock Bonnie is? Right I've, there. I've been right thinking the same thing face. as Burn Trap's body is Glamrock Bonnie's body. Yeah. I'm not just saying that because they're both rabbits. There's actually a couple more clues that pointed me in this direction. If we turn back to when we last saw Afton in the form of Scrap Trap during Pizzeria Simulator and Ultimate hey, Custom buddy. Night, there were some interesting design details. Namely, the fact that we can see a lot of bone underneath the suit. A lot of bone. Mm -hmm. Top of his skull, his jaw, around the eyes here, even the collarbone you can make out in his jump scare. But here in Security Breach, Afton has basically got a whole new body. As Scrap Trap, he was There's made Primarily of bone and muscle, but now he's almost entirely animatronic, with the exception of the weird fleshy tendons that entangle the endoskeleton, as well as the skull, which now appears to be melted into the rabbit face. But we see loads of endoskeletons throughout Security Breach. We even hear Vanessa saying that they could just put old casings onto new endos if they need to. Monty will run the shows until person service can slap your casing on a new endo. So why then am I so sure that Burn Trap uses Bonnie's endo when they could have used any other endoskeleton? It all comes comes down to the hands. They make a big point in the trailers to reveal this mechanical hand with claws at the end of its fingers, and they put emphasis on it again during <laughs> when Afton's we all thought it was going to be a nightmare. Reaches outside the recharge station. Nightmare on both trap. occasions, the focus is on Afton's left hand, a hand that was completely missing from Scrap Oh shoot! Trap I didn't Nasics notice that. An ultimate custom night. I mean, technically he was missing that entire left arm, but uh, you get the point. Yeah. So what does any of this have to do with Bonnie? That could be any endoskeleton arm, right? Wrong. Take a look at the Glamrock endoskeletons from this game. Their hands? Yep, they don't have claws. The only animatronic whose endoskeleton does have claws? Montgomery Gator. We hey, actually get a really good look at his hands once we've decommissioned him. But yeah. uh, hold on a minute, I was saying that Burn Trap was made from Bonnie, so why am I so focused on Monty? Well, we have to go back to the messages that we get on our Faz Watch. Down in Parts and Services, we get this maintenance log. Quote, Montgomery's claw upgrades allow him to play the bass. Following performances, he mostly uses them to cause damage. 
damage. Before I read this message, Monty having claws didn't really strike me as an odd design detail. I mean, the dude's an alligator. Kinda <laughs> makes sense. But this message made me reevaluate that opinion. Claws are only for animatronics that play the bass. Oh yeah, and Monty uh, played Bonnie the bass. Being out of commission, we get this line. Damn. Quote, with okay. Bonnie out of commission, we are making Monty the new bass player. Parts and service have already done the proper adjustments. End quote. They're installing the claws on Monty because he's becoming the bass player, which means that Bonnie before him must have also had claws. They need to be built huh. into the endoskeleton nice. because they have to pluck the heavier <laughs> strings. Therefore, the claws on Afton's new body prove that they could have only come from a single source, Glamrock Bonnie. But nice. Glamrock Bonnie isn't the only one conspicuously missing from the security breach lineup. Where is everyone's See, favorite on. yellow clickbait, yeah. Golden Freddy? At first, so I, I knew about all that about Bonnie stuff. I, I agree 100%. Saw old yellow Fred Bear, he was twitching away at the end of Ultimate Custom Night, keeping the spirit of Afton trapped in an endless purgatory of torment. Meanwhile, you got Old Man Consequences over here asking Cassidy, you good, bro? And encouraging <laughs> them to leave the demon to hey, Chill demons. out, Cassidy. Come so, on, come on. Yep, that story seemed largely done. Cassidy, a.k.a. the one you should not have killed, a.k.a. the vengeful spirit, call the kid whatever you want, mm -hmm. this was another playing piece off the lore table. The end of another character arc. So why would Cassidy appear in Security Breach? Doesn't seem necessary. But then, it was more Freddy Spaghetti time. Security Breach once again threw everything it had at the wall to see what stuck. And I do mean everything they had. Basically, it's a whole lot. And it's kind of concerning. This point is represented somewhere in this game. FNAF 1 animatronics, FNAF 2 animatronics, tons of references to FNAF 4, a direct connection back to FNAF 6, there's Baby, there's the Puppet, there's the Fun Times. If my Stay theories well. up to this point have been Stay correct well. too, you also get Crying Child, Michael, and Elizabeth. The Aftons all in one neat little package. And that's still not all. The arcade cabinets <laughs> reference everything from the original novel trilogy to the Fazbear Fright stories. Heck, in this one game, you get not only one, but two. Count them two versions of William Afton. Glitch Trap and Burn Trap. You have all the versions of pretty much all the important kind characters of. throughout the franchise. So in a I, title I that seemingly references every other important corner okay, of FNAF sure. War, where's our golden boy Freddy? Well, he's there. He's hiding in plain sight. Right here. Inside the Princess Quest arcade games. The princess is quite literally Golden Freddy. Or to be entirely accurate, it's actually the spirit of Cassidy inside the arcade game. I know, it seems crazy, right? And while I could try to bury the lead here and string this whole thing out, I'm not. There's just <laughs> much to talk about. We know that this is Golden Freddy because it's coming straight out of the horse's mouth. I guess it's the sheep's mouth because it's Steel Wool Studios. Oh, gosh. Anyway, if you dive into the game files, there's a character sprite folder labeled Cassidy. Open it up and what do you find? The princess. Now, I gotta be honest, that alone didn't convince me. Sure, it is a huge deal and obviously the golden color of the princess is a direct connection back to mm -hmm. everyone's favorite yellow sure. bear but this is also a series that's used the name Jeremy in like what at least four separate places is that right is it four, four now he's a missing children's incident kid yeah. he sliced his face off in FNAF VR with a yeah. paper cutter he's a security guard from the FNAF 2 paychecks yeah. and oh yeah he's in the latest Fazbear Frights book so yeah. yep those are the four instances that I can Good just God. remember off the Scott, top of my find head new so names. forgive me if I'm in need of a bit more proof here before I call this one confirmed so I kept digging first it's worth noting that in a previous theory I suspected that the princess was actually meant to be a stand in for Vanessa. You see, Security Breach isn't the first time that we've actually seen the Princess Quest minigame. It originated as part of the mobile port for FNAF yeah. VR when they needed some way of telling Vanessa's story. Instead of finding 16 glitching cassette tapes like you did in the original FNAF VR, the mobile port Hey, we can't fit all the Princess content Quest on the mobile one, port. Lighting How do we get people to play it? to eventually find the lair of glitch trap. Interestingly though, digging through that game's files reveals that the Princess character wasn't labeled as Cassidy. This is a new thing for Security Breach, which tells tells me that this was also an important story element for them. A story that, now that we have all three Princess Quest games to look at, suddenly takes on a different meaning. When you play Princess Quest 1, you're being hunted down by black and glitchy rabbit creatures. These things are clearly working for Glitch Trap, but if that's the case, why would he be sending them to attack you? If the princess is truly meant to be a stand-in for Vanessa finding the tapes, wouldn't he want Vanessa to find them so she comes under his control? Rabbits attacking doesn't make sense.
friends. However, if we consider the Golden Princess to instead be Cassidy, back from the dead once more to try and stop William for good, then of course, Billy Afton would do everything he can to stop the princess. I also think that each princess okay. quest represents a different phase of Cassidy's experience quite nicely. In the first one, Cassidy is helpless, an innocent, helpless child lured to a back room and killed by a monster that looms in the shadows. But by Princess Quest 3, the princess is fighting back. And not just fighting back, but doing it in the same location that we walked through in FNAF VR. Notice the large central stage, the prize corner back behind us, and a rounded side stage to the left. Now, this is an important detail because as we see at the end of FNAF VR, we're playing in the location of the missing children's incident. Glitch Trap lures us to the back room only to shove our dead body into Freddy's suit while he dances around. This Yay. is Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, where the initial five kids, including Cassidy, first went missing. Cassidy's story truly comes full circle. Playing through Princess Quest 3 the first time, I also thought it was unusual to have a giant Chica face Hi, Chica. in the background watching us. Like, why? Seriously, why? You don't just do that for decoration. And then I remembered this line from Ultimate Custom Night. <laughs> Oh, she watches. That's I right. Was the first, I have seen everything. This means that Susie, the spirit inside of Chica, She's saw watching. the deaths okay. of everyone else, okay. meaning that she was probably watching as Cassidy was killed. Hence, why she, of all the characters, would be the one watching us in this moment. So the file name matches, the color matches, the narrative arc makes sense as we revisit important locations from Cassidy's past. Okay, that's not all. Elsewhere in the files, there's another piece of glitch text, similar to the text that we are originally saw when you approach Glitch Trap in Princess Quest 1, but this time it's much shorter. It'd be hard to decipher if we hadn't just decoded Afton's text before, but we did. And using that code, we're able to translate these dots It's as me. It's Wait, we me. figured this out the so long ago, phrase though. that we've seen every time Golden Freddy has been present throughout the series. Last but not least, Cassidy being here just makes sense with the story. Whenever there's William, Cassidy is close behind, hence the whole vengeful part of vengeful <laughs> spirit. This is something that we actually see in the Fazbear Frights <sighs> books. Specifically, the story The Man in Room 1280. In this story, we get a ruined <laughs> so Afton sad. dying on a bed, haunted by oh, an angry man. spirit named Andrew with curly black hair wearing an alligator mask. This very clearly is meant to be the book stand in for Cassidy. In a previous story, Andrew outright says, quote, I do remember wanting to get back at someone who hurt me. I think I attached myself to him. I got into his soul, made sure he couldn't move on when he should have died. I remember I wanted him to suffer the way he made me suffer. Basically, the two are inseparable. Andrew grafted himself onto Afton, and now their souls are mixed. So consider this. Glitch Trap was created when a bunch of circuit boards were scanned into a system to create a video game. They sent us that stuff in the first oh, hey. place with no explanation. Hey, girl. It was just What's junk. Up? Circuit boards and things like that. Somehow, though, there was usable code on some of it. If Cassidy was truly attached to Afton, then Cassidy's spirit would also likely be in those Aww. circuit boards, thereby creating God. a digital version okay. of her, aka yeah, the yeah, princess. Yeah. So yeah, I feel pretty darn confident that that is in All right, Cassidy I get it, I get it. Quest. All right. Everything I could find backs it up from a design, timeline, narrative sense. Also, the file name suggests that the king is actually old man consequences. Uh, sure, I guess. Leave the demon guess, to his demons. Okay. Unless, of course, you want to take my sword and go ham on him. Anyway, so what does it all mean? Why is this important at all? Well, it gives us a rationale for why playing some random arcade games somehow manages to free Vanessa from Glitch Trap's control. As a reminder, if you play all three Princess Quest games, you get the free Vanny ending, where she turns good and joins you eating symbolic ice cream cones. But really, it's a pretty weird logical leap that playing a few random arcade games somehow gets this young woman free of the virus that's infected her brain. But now, it makes a bit more <laughs> well, sense. makes perfect yeah, sense to me. Quest I don't know what you're talking about. Confront a large security door that's covered in purple goo, only to get a blood curdling scream. <laughs> That goo tells us that it's glitch trap behind the door. It even has a glowing set of eyes on the left-hand side, which, mm. if you squint, kind of looks like a rabbit head. This kind of goo wasn't present what? in the identical door within <laughs> Help okay, Wanted, yeah, implying sure. that he is now in control. Could so when Cassidy eyes? unlocks the door and goes in, the digital scream that we hear from the other side is glitch trap dying, crying out as Cassidy delivers the killing blow and maybe, hopefully, finally, putting both of their souls to rest. Security breach Probably not, and though. the story about endings. Throughout all of my 
my security breach theories thus far, we focused heavily on the idea of characters coming full circle, giving closure to them and ending their parts within the FNAF storyline. The crying child and the missing children but we've got also their done closure that so back many in FNAF goddamn 3's times, Happiest so. Day. Henry and the puppet got their closure in the FNAF 6 ending. If I'm right about my theories, then the rebuilt Afton kids get their closure on the hillside eating ice cream here in Security Breach. And now Cassidy. While all the other dead kids of the series have been able to move on, Cassidy has always remained. Always trying to chase Afton down, torturing him in purgatory for what he's done. So driven by anger and revenge that she couldn't let go. So this feels like a great ending to this chapter of the series. Finally, Cassidy gets to join the others and rest, putting aside their agony and putting an end to the Golden Freddy arc, and hopefully to Afton's arc as well. But there's still one more Let's hope so. Complete. One more series of secrets in this game that we haven't talked about the yet. CDs. Tune in next FNAF oh, episode God. as we wrap up our coverage for Security Breach by talking about the most controversial and frustrating part of it. The retro CDs. The, CDs. the mysterious Patient 46. And what all of that has to do with the theories that we've covered so far. So bite of 87 that subscribe button to ensure that you don't miss it. And as always, remember I'll be reacting to it, theory. so subscribe to me too. A game, too. A game theory. theory. Thanks for watching. So remember, All right. February 19th, Saturday, for our final Security Breach Theory. Oh, and then make sure you stick around after the episode for a live theorist talkback, where me and a bunch of other FNAF theorists from around YouTube get together to discuss all things Security Breach. Oh. The good, the bad, the robotic. And we can't wait to hear your thoughts on it as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was pretty good. I knew... I, I do agree with the whole Glamrock Bonnie thing. I feel like everyone is on that same level. You know, Monty killed him, and then the parts were used for Burn Trap. It's pretty simple. It's all there in the game. The Cassidy thing, I think there's a lot of evidence for. Personally, I would like it much better if it wasn't Golden Freddy, but at the same time, now watching this video, it does fit being being Golden Freddy and getting that final final closure. Uh, but yeah, pretty pretty solid theory all around. Definitely... My favorite out of the out of the three so far. Again, looks like we have one more on the 19th. So that is going to be interesting talking about all of the retro CDs because I listened to them all. I understood the main plot. I don't really know about all of the in-depth stuff and all the connections back to Afton and Vanessa and all that stuff that I'm sure Matt is going to explain. Because like I, I've said previously, I don't really care too much about the lore anymore. I like watching these videos, they're interesting, but it's not like I'm sitting here and I'm like, God damn it, Matt, you got that wrong. You know, I don't I don't really care. But yeah, it looks like I'll see you guys on the 19th for one final reaction to Game Theory Security Breach. But until then, I'll see you all in the next episode. Thanks for watching, hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.